May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of St. John Cantius. He was born in Poland in 1390. He was a canon in Krakow and professor of philosophy and theology at the local university. He was also a physicist. In Europe of the 15th century, the Church was still reeling from the effects of the Western Schism. The emergence of antipopes divided the allegiances of Catholics. Exaggerated criticism of Church authority led to the support of conciliarism, which asserts that the only solution to the Church's problems was submission of the Pope to the authority of Church councils. Many philosophers wished to separate the Church from the altar of learning. Some mystics wished to separate piety from a search for the truth. Who say heretics wish to detach the Church from all temporal matters, and the academics defended the rights of pagans and schismatics under the banner of freedom of conscience. The similarity to our time is clearly evident. During his teaching, St. John not only enlightened the minds of his disciples with pure doctrine, but filled their hearts with the sincerest piety. He said, What kind of work can be more noble than to cultivate the minds of young people, guarding it carefully, so that the knowledge and love of God and his holy precepts go hand in hand with learning. To form young Christians and citizens, isn't this the most beautiful and noble-minded way to make use of life, of all one's talents and energy? He devoted himself for some time to the care of souls in a parish where he had been sent because of the aversion and false accusations of his rivals at the university. But a few years later, he was called back. It was the period when the faith in Poland was shaken by the Taborites, an extreme wing of the heretical movements of the Hussites of Bohemian origin. John defended orthodoxy in university classrooms, patiently enduring offenses and provocations that sometimes degenerated also into physical confrontations. He said, fight all mistakes, but do it with good humor, patience, kindness, and love. He was so affected by the passion of Christ that he would spend whole nights without sleep in the contemplation of it. And in order to better cultivate this devotion, he undertook a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Four times he went to Rome on foot and carrying his own luggage to visit the threshold of the apostles in order to honor the apostolic see to which he was earnestly devoted and also, as he used to say, to save himself from purgatory by means of the indulgences there daily to be gained. During one of his pilgrimages to Rome, he was attacked by robbers. They took away his possessions and money and let him go. When he had already walked a good distance, he remembered that he had taken some gold pieces with him soon into his garment. So he got back to the robbers and offered them the forgotten gold coins. The robbers were so amazed by this attitude that they gave him back what they had stolen. Those who told him to take, to take care of his health, he answered that the ancient desert fathers had lived long lives which much, with much less food and nourishing God's soul. His faith was pure and simple, consisting in prayers, penances, and pilgrimages. At length, full of days and merits, he prepared himself long and distant diligently for death, which he felt drawing near. And that nothing might be a hindrance to him, he distributed all that remained in his house to the poor. His soul, 
adorned with many merits, return to the Lord. On the vigil of Christmas, the 24th of December, 1473. After his death, his hand appeared in the streets of Krakow with a candle to accompany students who had strayed away from the path of wisdom. St. John was known for his mercy. He fed to the poor and left them in his own clothes. Once he gave his shoes to a frozen, starving man. Another one he covered with his coat, which was soon returned to him by Our Lady herself. Another time he took pity of a maid who feared the anger of her mistress by miraculously reassembling the jar that she had broken. He is venerated as the patron saint of scholars and works of mercy. In Krakow, he was considered as the good master, the Magister Bonus. The purple robe, which he has worn as a doctor, was religiously conserved and always given to the venerable hat of the School of Philosophy on the day of his reception. And the promise was required of the teachers there to imitate the virtues of this beloved saint. For centuries, Academic life has concentrated around the relics of St. John of Krakow, and knowledge and wisdom search the alliance with holiness, said Pope John Paul II. Holiness and knowledge are the basis of every fruitful apostolate and the source of great merits for our soul. So let us pray then to St. John Canthus, that he may intercede for us before the throne of Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, and to obtain us a great love for knowledge and holiness of life. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.